Um, as Maria mentioned, my name is Marisol, and I am a creative writer and a community scholar, primarily um, based here in San Antonio. I, I did my PhD in cultural studies from the University of California, Davis, but I choose to work in the community um, instead of in the university, supporting social movement building primarily through writing and research. And with Maria, who I've known for many years, with Jessica, who I've known for many years, and many others, I've participated in numerous struggles, um, mostly around land and water protection, struggles to protect La Madre Tierra against predatory and extractive forms of development, and to create and preserve the commons. And so that's kind of the lens that I bring to thinking about housing that I wanted to share with you today. Um, today what I wanted to do is present some kind of bigger picture ways of thinking about housing from that perspective. But before I do, um, what I would like to do is open with a poem that I wrote as I was doing kind of the more scholarly writing um, about what happened at Mission Trails. And in part because I think the numbers that came out of that research are very important, but I think um, in the face of uh, institutional forces of erasure. Some stories can really only be documented um, poetically or creatively. So um, I'll open with a poem that is called Dedication to the ones who stayed until the end. The ones who stayed till the end did not want to go to any parks on any developers approved list. The ones who stayed till the end did not want to post to Craigslist $5,000 homes into which they had poured 15,000 in repairs inside which they'd rebuilt lives once wrecked by violence, domestic or state or both. The ones who stayed all the way until the end did so because they saw what happened to their neighbors when their neighbors left on someone else's terms, someone else's timeline, someone else's I know it's best. Someone else is for your own good, for the good of the city, for the good of the tax base. And they said, no, sorry, not good enough. The ones who stayed believed in the rightness and the goodness of what they wanted and what their children deserved. They wouldn't settle. They dreamed of keeping their homes or buying a home, of buying land where they could move together in this land where rights are founded on removal. The ones who stayed until the end were the bravest because they had no choice. There was nothing, no help for women without papers, women without English, who were mothers of young children. The ones who could left early before the rats came, the break-ins, the machines chewing up, the empty trailers with mouths gaping, not even stopping when the kids walked past on their way home from school. The ones with the least had no choice but to stay in furious tones naming the raw deal they'd gotten and how it wasn't enough. In the end, what they got was near, nothing near what they needed, but they never stopped insisting on their right to it. They fought and stayed till the end, abandoned and failed in the end by the city, the developers, the organizations, even the lawyer, even us, everyone supposedly trying to help, confounded by these women who refused to take the deal and get out. Didn't they understand what a good deal they were getting? Weren't they grateful? Didn't they know they were entitled to nothing? These mujeres desagradecidas who were not about to leave before they were ready or to move where they didn't want to go to begin with. The ones who stayed till the end were non-persons in the eyes of the state with no rights to land or even survival, much less any pursuit of happiness, which was why they insisted in the name of their full humanity that, in fact, they deserved the world for what had been done to them and to their children. 